All right. Everybody get out your imaginary GPS, and you're going to want your starting location to be anywhere in Israel. Find your way up to the Jordan River border crossing and head into the nation of Jordan. And if you manage to make it through, head straight down Highway 65 for an hour, just alongside the King Abdullah Canal, until you find yourself in the city of Deir Allah. Now, if you see the mall, you've gone a little too far. So turn yourself around, go back to the gas station, and there, right across from a government building, is a large mound of dirt known as Tel Deir Allah. At this mound, made up of the remains of many ancient dwelling places built on top of each other, you will find a multi-chambered structure destroyed by an earthquake during the Persian period. And there, painted on plaster in black and red ink, we have the only archaeological evidence of an actual person from our Torah. And there it is on your screen. It isn't Abraham. It isn't Moses. In fact, it is Balaam ben Beor, a non-Israelite prophet. Not exactly who you expected, I'm sure. But who exactly is Balaam ben Beor? And what can we learn from this two-bit character who shows up in just a few chapters of Torah? In one of our weekly Torah portions, Balak, since we have a double portion this week, we are introduced to Balak, king of the Moabites, who is terrified of the people of Israel and seeks to defeat them in battle. He sends messengers to hire Balaam ben Beor, a seer or magician, or whatever you want to call him, to lay a curse on the Israelites. Balaam agrees with the caveat that he can only say what God allows him to say. Balaam takes up a position on a mountain overlooking the people of Israel, and he opens his mouth to curse them. But he can't. Instead, he blesses them. Who can count the dust of Jacob, number the dust cloud of Israel, May I die the death of the upright. May my fate be like theirs. King Balak is furious and asks Balaam the seer to try cursing them again. But Balaam can only speak blessing. And a third time, the same thing happens. Now, some of you might remember that there's also a talking donkey at some point in this story, but frankly, that's a whole other sermon. We'll save it. Now, Balaam is a confusing character. On one hand, he accepts the job to curse the people of Israel for very good money. And on the other hand, he blesses them with words of praise instead. The rabbis, as we might, had mixed feelings about Balaam. In one midrash, a rabbinic story, he is described as the greatest prophet who ever lived, even better than Moses. No other non-Israelite is even called a prophet. In another midrash, he is depicted as the advisor to Pharaoh, who came up with the idea of throwing Israelite children into the Nile. Not a good guy. And in yet another, he is tormented in the deepest pits of the underworld as punishment for being a great enemy of Israel. So all in all, it's kind of a mixed bag. So why is this man, Balaam, the only person from the Torah for whom we have archaeological evidence? There are a couple of possible answers. One is that he may have been a popular figure in folklore in the ancient Near East. And the other, and bear with me, is that he was a real person who lived. 
Now, I don't know which I believe, but I deeply believe that the strange and storied life of the prophet Balaam has something to teach us about our own lives. One of the prayers we sing at every morning service, Ma Tovu, is a direct quote from Balaam in this week's Torah portion. Ma Tovu Ohalecha Yaakov, Mishkenotecha Yisrael. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. These beautiful words extolling the virtues of the community of Israel flow from the tongue of a mercenary magician hired by Israel's enemy. How extraordinary it is to hear divine wisdom from such an unexpected source. And I'm sure that if we think back, most of us can recall a time when we found life lessons that took us by surprise. There are many times that I have learned something from someone I never expected. When I first started working with eight and nine-year-old campers at Camp George up in Perry Sound, Ontario, I imagined I would be doing all of the teaching. I was wrong. Children often view the world in an entirely different way than adults, seeing things grown-ups don't see. On a particularly hot, sunny day, I was sweating and cursing my fate, of course, but one of my campers pointed to the rays of light shining through the leaves and said, look, it's God. I was taken aback. This kid didn't even know how to take a shower on his own, and he could find God in a beam of light. That camper opened my eyes to the beauty of small things. I have never looked at sunlight quite the same way again, although living in Florida is testing me. And that change happened because I was willing to listen to my camper, someone I assumed knew less about the world than I did. There's a rabbinic saying that has been personally inspiring to me for a long time. Who is wise? One who learns from every human being. That was Hillel speaking. But I can learn just as much from a child as I can from a great rabbi of our tradition. We can learn so much from so many different experiences and people. Any encounter with another person, whoever they are, is an opportunity for us to grow as human beings. When we listen and take to heart what others have to say, we can benefit from their experiences, we can share in their wisdom, and most important, we can build lasting, trusting relationships. And I want to be clear, I'm not really talking about politics, although this lesson has its applications there too. What I mean is that when we connect with another person one-on-one -on -one and allow them to be our teacher, we can expand our view of the world. We can see from their perspective and feel the impact of their narrative, even if we don't agree with it. And certainly, there are plenty of people and experiences that can only teach us how not to do something, like from someone who steals your parking spot, even when you're using your turn signals and you've been driving around the parking lot for 10 minutes looking for a spot, and that was my spot. I had my signals on. That's just an example. And that brings me back to Balaam, who may or may not have been an actual person. Here's someone in the Torah and discussed by the rabbis who could be a hero or a villain. It is impossible to decide. But whoever he is, our Torah offers him to us as a teacher. 
Ma tovu o halecha Yaakov. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, he teaches us. And in doing so, he shows us that the most precious wisdom can come from the most unlikely source. Shabbat Shalom.